Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic, down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, uh, the Dean and Rhea catch-up. We're now going across the Atlantic Ocean over to my wonderful, wonderful co-host, Rhea. How are you today? Hiya, lovelies. Hiya, Dean. I'm good, thank you. It's quite a nice day in the UK. Oh, I've just had a Skype message. Never mind that. And uh, yeah, all good, Dean. How are you? I'm doing terrific. It's uh, it's a great day. It's uh, a beautiful. Finally, we've got uh, we've had so much rain, Ria. We've got a beautiful fall day here on Long Island, and uh, this time of year, uh, it's some of the most beautiful, beautiful weather and spectacular views. Probably uh, put it with anywhere in the country here, Eastern Long Island, the North Shore. It's just beautiful in the fall. Yeah, but autumn is lovely, isn't it? I really notice autumn. I've got a personal mission because I've been working in the digital world to get back in tune with nature. So watch the birds and, and look at the colour of the leaves and just soak in nature a little more. So it's a sort of bit of a personal plan for tomorrow, Dean. You know, Rhea, there's, uh, there's a road here, a major road called Nichols Road. It's 97 here, and uh, it's connected with uh, the Long Island Expressway uh, 347. And you drive up that north or south, you take that ride north to the, to the studio here in my home, and left to right, Stony Brook University, the hospital, the leaves, the trees, it's got to be some of the most beautiful, beautiful views uh, here in the United States. Really unbelievable. You're very lucky, Dinks. People in town don't get that, do they? No, it's great to, uh, I find it really wonderful to live in this part of the country, uh, eastern Long Island, because uh, you get to experience the different uh the different four seasons, but then again, as we're seeing worldly, um, who knows what the weather has in touch for us uh, over the next few months that our, our weather patterns, Rhea, uh, are changing so dramatically. I don't know if you have something to say in regard to that, especially, uh, you know, the hurricanes, what, uh, what's what been going on, as well as uh, I'm sure you're seeing the news. I'm sure it's reaching Europe out in the UK. Just the awful uh, news. Uh, one of my favorite places to visit, my 60th birthday back in May. I took my family. We experienced, I've been there for years, Napa Valley, and the just awful fires that they're experiencing out there. Yeah, the weather's created a lot of... Um a lot of trouble and what can you say about it really other than my heart goes out to people affected by it it really does because it is such a powerful thing and there's sort of two big stories regarding the weather um i won't go into it today because it's not that kind of program but if you go online there's some people with this view and there's some people with that view and they are not the same so there's all sorts of stories going around with the weather but my heart goes out to anybody affected by it dean wow it's just uh just awful uh listen i want to ask you how how's mom doing how's she feeling yeah good she's 80 um and <clears throat> it's one of those things hey i won't get into it you know personal stuff but one little thing causes another little thing and another and then the little things become bigger things and yeah god i love my mum to bit so you know i'm around for her and she knows it and and my mission statement with my mum is to make her laugh so it hurts every day wow wow Hey, listen, the uh, the video, uh, first of all, I'm glad mom's doing well, but the uh, the video, uh, the video of you coming in right now is spectacular. And uh, I just want to say to everybody that besides my co-host, almost uh, like uh, the COO of uh, of the show, uh, that uh, Rhea is responsible for uh, what you see here and uh, and bringing the great audio and video quality that we're able to bring through this show. So uh always like to give you a good plug Rhea. 
You're very kind, Dean. You're very kind. A, a lot of hard work's gone in. Well, sort of hard work, but hard enough, you know. You, I'll say it now and I'll say it again. If you deal with tech, you'll get tech problems. And that's the way it is. And to have an in-house engineer, you're very lucky. And it just makes it all go a bit smoother, um, doesn't it? Hey, what did you think to the video I sent you yesterday? Hey, that video was great. That video is great. You're, uh, hey, listen, for someone, uh, for someone that had a tremendous audio talent, okay, you're pretty damn creative with your uh, video editing. And uh, obviously your great talents, uh, you know, I did a great, great two part series with uh, with my friend Ray Perini running for Suffolk County District Attorney. Uh, one of the one of the biggest elections, high profile elections that's coming here in Suffolk County, Long Island, probably in two decades. And uh, you just you did a great job with uh, with the show's new intro. Uh, really remarkable. You're welcome. Thank you. I mean, um, probably because I do the editing these days. Um, a long story short is the amount of times I've been in a situation in various products and gone, oh, God, I wish we had a video editor. And then one morning I just woke up and thought, um, I'm getting a call on the screen. Go away. Um, and I thought, woke up one morning and said, right, that's it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make some put some weeks out months and learn how to do it went out spent an, a painful amount of money on stuff the right stuff i might add and i've had my head down um and reading more reading than i care to imagine and i've started to cover ground as you know i sent you that video didn't i a 10 second called planet tag and it's like a sci-fi thing so if you're at home and you've got the big cinema experience with the big sound system cue this bad boy up and play this and see what you make of that because it is super high def sound super high def going on and it's it's an amazing 10 seconds that it turned out, wasn't it? It's an amazing 10 seconds and it's amazing how you're able to, you've done a great job with the intros and uh, it's, I know how difficult and challenging it is to, uh, once you put up raw footage of a video or a show and once you start that rendering process, it's extremely, uh, not only uh, do you have to have the talents to be able to execute flawlessly, but uh, it's extremely time consuming. So uh, kudos to you. You're, uh, you know, each day that goes on for over a year now, uh, us working together uh, every day, new talents that you bring to the show. And I thank you very much. You're welcome, sweetie. And the Ray Perini thing, I liked Ray. And because I edited the video, obviously, I've heard every single word and, you know, and all that kind of thing. And we run up some new equipment on the show and it worked pretty good. So um, we, we've had someone comment that they could hear your breath because I use some some what could only be called world class limiters and compressors for anybody that knows that kind of stuff and maybe a bit too much. So we're just going to wind that off a little bit, you know, but I like, you know, if you're doing an interview, it's lovely to have an intimate sound and and hear every breath and every nuance of what's being said. So I don't know, we'll get we'll strike a balance and, and it will just get better, Dean. You know, you mentioned and you mentioned Ray Perini. Um, uh, it's, you know, over the past, you know, this is a catch up over the past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, it's just, I've, as you can see, I've been pretty busy, Rhea. Um, just met some, one of the greatest things of the show is the opportunity that it's uh, given me um, to meet some really wonderful people and people to uh, that inspire, educate and form, have some humor. And everyone's got a story, everyone's got an experience, and to be able to uh, touch with people, I mean, you've seen it. I mean, all people have to do is go to the show's YouTube channel or uh, to uh, the Facebook uh, show, um, be able to view. I mean, people like uh, a principal here on Long Island, Stu Pollock. Uh, you met Stu when the show was initially launched and we just had audio. And uh, and now we had an opportunity to do a Dean on the street recently outside to talk at Starbucks and we had a lot of fun. Yeah, I saw the video. I mean, yeah, I mean, he was like a new man, wasn't he? 
And I said to you when I did the intro, don't forget to tell him I put up skinny stew pollock. <laughs> Not the old, not the old Steve Pollock. I thought you might like that. Hey, listen, we had so much fun, Ria. If you were, you know, you didn't get a chance, you didn't get a chance to view uh, really Stu because the show was uh, strictly audio back then. Okay, so now with the, he can't wait to come into the studio, Stu Pollock, because uh, he said uh, this show, his appearance on the show, even it was, even though it wasn't video, it had a major impact on how he looks today. I mean, he lost 55 pounds in wow. 50 days. We took, uh, as you as you see, we take uh, photos of guests. We took still photos in the studio. So obviously that was put on the Instagram page. And he just did not like the way he looked. And he said it was that day being on the show that triggered him to lose weight. And uh, he thanked me, thanked us. Oh, bless him. Good one, Stu. Uh, if you carry around f 55 pounds in, fi was it 50 days, did you say? Yes, 55 pounds in 50 days. That's like, yeah, wow. He needs to do a video sort of thing where he shows people how he did that. <laughs> so he's he's just a, uh, a great guest, uh, principal, leadership, education. And, uh, and it was just great getting back to him again. Uh, I've had experiences with uh, um, someone touching base with me after 18 years he hasn't seen me. And his name's Rich Salgado. Uh, they call him Big Daddy. He's a very big uh, insurance consultant advisor to high net worth individuals, uh, uh, specifically uh, works with a lot of uh, sports people, uh, a lot of football players, and uh, look, the show reconnected where he touched base with me and sees what I'm doing, and he says, we gotta get together. So uh, we got together at a great food establishment called Prime Fine Catering in Garden City, New York. We did some Dina on the streets there, and uh, we just had a lot of fun, and it gave a, a chance for people to uh, really hear about Big Daddy, and also this great uh, food establishment that he loves to uh, eat at called Prime Fine Catering, Healthy Cuisine in Garden City. Nice, a, a sort of an expose sort of thing, an easy, relaxed, down-to-earth expose. Uh, you, it's nice to have a bit of easy viewing, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. You know, Rich called me the other day just to touch base with me. He, uh, he also is a commentator on the show Fox and Friends. Did you ever hear of Fox and Friends? Yeah, of course I have, yeah. Good, I'm glad you heard of it, okay? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know whether in Europe, in, in the UK, whether you uh, whether you see something like that, Fox and Friends. No, no, you don't get it in the UK. Okay, well, Rich is on, on, on the football segments, you know, a lot of Super Bowl predictions, NFL predictions, okay? And he called me the other day and said one of the producers there loves our show and, and what we're doing here, okay? He, okay. the, the only criticism, and he says, Dean, don't take it as a criticism. He says the only, the only constructive criticism is cut down on the amount of times I say this is Dean on the street. We've been around that one, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. He says everybody. You, know I mean? <laughs> you, you couldn't, you know, you just got to ease back on the branding. You know, I think you'd have to live, well, you'd certainly have to live outside Long Island to know that it's not Dean on the street, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. So he, uh, he says, Dean, everybody knows you're ready. You don't have to, you don't have to say it 10 times. Everybody knows you're ready. But you know the way I am, Ria. Oh, yeah, it doesn't really bother me. Hopefully it doesn't bother anybody else. I mean, um, yeah, I, I guess, uh, how would you explain it? I guess when something's sort of rooted in and people just know it, then it's less important to say who you are. I mean, you know, uh, you've got the brand Dean on the street and anything other than that, welcome to Dean on the street. Hey, it's, it's your thing, Dean. Do what you want. Do what makes you smile and makes you happy. That's what I say. This makes me so... Listen, the listen. I love doing the in, the in studio shows. I love it. I love it. But let me tell you something. You know, thirty years I was in sales, head of sales. Uh, you know, in my family's company, Twin Lab, and every day for th almost three decades, I was touching people and being out there and 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 talking to everybody. 
So uh, this gives me the opportunity to do that again. So no matter where I am, you never know when Dean on the street's going to show up. And I just, I just, uh, I have the greatest, I have the greatest time doing it. I just made you almost choke on your coffee there, Ria. I've seen some of the stuff you do. I, I think you're really ballsy just to get up in the middle of a restaurant and go, hey, it's Dean on the street. I mean, I remember when I first saw it, I thought, okay, if you're prepared to do that, then I can do a lot of the other stuff and together we can maybe cover ground. Right. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sometimes crazy and you're a weirdo. Yeah, oh, totally. I'm proud of it as well. You're a weirdo. Okay, but that's I'm what... I'm a hippie weirdo, though. You know, yeah, a bit of a hippie weirdo. I don't know. My, I'm still evolving, so... And I'm just evolving into this hippie weirdo, less of a politician, sort of opinionated, and going into this 3D-generated world digitally because I thoroughly enjoy making this stuff that people like. And I've had great feedback. And I've got work coming in off it, which is superb. You know, I'm going to... I'm going to real quickly just run up some catching up still on my end and I want to go to you. Uh, you know, it's it's really created some incredible experiences of meeting new and, and doing some wild and crazy stuff. I mean, I never thought that I'd go to a restaurant to an exotic car show, some of the most unbelievable cars that you'll see anywhere in the world, uh, from Lamborghinis to Ferraris to everything. And here I am outside of an unbelievable upscale restaurant, Insignia Prime Steak and Sushi in Smithtown, and I'm doing with the general manager and partner, uh, I'm doing a, uh, a show, a Dean on the Street, outside this exotic car show that's, that thousands of people are attending. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, I saw the clip. Obviously, I saw the clip. And when I was making the the block intro that comes up, um, obviously, I got to look at the clips and see what's going on. So, so then, yeah, uh, then I also had a, a type of guest, a, a nice lady from Toronto that flew in and she wanted to do a Dean on the street with me in Manhattan. She was in New York promoting a new book that's called Smoke and Mirrors, a strategic self-awareness for leaders and future leaders. She was promoting her book. She's a leadership coach, a business advisor for high, you know, for, for CEOs. And she told me that uh, if she's going to do a Dean on the street with me, okay, I have to take her to a really good kosher delicatessen for for kosher deli and for good kosher pickles so i had to do that okay that's fair enough wild experience okay that that uh, that type of pressure was put on me and and insistent that i do that well either you yield or you don't so it's up to you i'm, I'm sure i'm sure it didn't stop you filling your car up with gas no it didn't the the best thing about it is she said dean blackman let me tell you something I've done 50 interviews over the past year. You're the first one that made me feel that it was fun and not work today. That's how skillful you are, Dean. Listen, let's hear a little bit catch up from you. Oh, okay. Well, obviously we don't rehearse this. I didn't know what you was bringing. You don't know what I've got. So um, I had some things, uh, things of interest. So where to start off? Uh, we go with... Um, Number one in France, right? You know when we go to so these aren't these aren't personal. Uh, no, they're not personal things. When when you open up a glossy magazine or and you see these people in them, and they look a million dollars, you know, and without doubt on these high end magazines they have been uh, modified, manipulated with Photoshop and and software like that, yeah. So you see these people, their eyes are white, their perfect teeth, their skin's perfect, they're the perfect shape, everything, right? Well, that's not real. That is Photoshop. And if you've ever seen it, there's body shapers, skin smoothers, all sorts of stuff, right? Well, in France, they're just about to set a new law into motion that if you open a French glossy magazine and if the image has been touched in any way, by Photoshop, it must be, it It was got to tell the people this has been manipulated. And if they don't put that warning on the photograph that people see, 
there's a 44,000 euro fine for every picture they put out that's um, not got a warning on it. How do you feel about that? Wow, that's unbelievable. So you're saying in France, in France, that any photo that's photoshopped or manipulated, anything with changed, there's a law and requirement that there needs to be a disclaimer, disclaimer on, on the photo. Yep. Um, my question, I think it's great. My question is, um, if they, if they do not put a disclaimer on it, how much time do they have to make the change or is there an immediate fine? It's an immediate, as soon as you go, if you're dealing with like glossy paper magazines, not online, the, the, the point that that's published, that's the point in where they'll occur the fine if they haven't put the warning on it. Because once it's been published, you know, the, the you know, it's got to be done. No, it's immediate. If it goes out and it's not got the warning on it, they're going to be fined forty four thousand euros, which is about fifty k US um, per photo. And Ria, that's become law right now in France. Uh, it's it's to be law within the next few. It's all passed. It's all got seal of approval and that's what they're going to be dealing with in france so i'll bring an example at some point on the show on a catch-up to show you what the warning looks like on actually on the magazine and stuff i'll do it like that that's amazing could you could you ever see that becoming law here in the united states mm, no well i don't know you have to put a time span in 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 two years five years 50 years i think because we're moving into god i'm not going to do political but because we're moving into an authoritarian state everything's got a warning on it hasn't it as soon as you walk out the door warning um this could happen warning restriction so yeah probably but when i have no idea i mean <laughs> what well, yeah no i was gonna do a political thing i won't do it but i mean uh, you know how many you know how many pictures in the glossy magazines are photoshopped or or changed or as you say the word manipulated yeah th th there are no photographs in mo glossy magazines that haven't been manipulated they, they're not there okay and we're talking just just france we're talking about yeah right now yeah could you see this could you see this catching on and being becoming law all over europe <sighs> Yeah, but yeah, that I can see because the Europeans love a bit of legislation, so that's possible. And obviously, if it goes to your country, if it applies to video, because you can get skin smoothers now for video, I'll have to take your skin smoothers off your video of you when I edit it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do any manipulating. I, I don't think you do either, too, Ria, do you? <laughs> I could, but I don't. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, yeah, I got the stuff, do you know what I mean, to make someone look good or look better than what they really are, you know, iron out the blemishes and all that. But I'm not going to. So that's one story, right? Do you want to have a go at one? I've got... Hey, listen, I want you to continue, but I've been dying to, to bring this up, and I know you're anxious for him to come in studio. You saw, you saw part one, part one, I still haven't uh, shown part two yet, of uh, my special guest, uh, William uh, Schaefer, Bill Schaefer. Yeah. Uh, what a great guy. Uh, what a yeah. super guy. Uh, Bill Schaefer, uh, if anyone hasn't seen it yet, uh, you can go to the show YouTube channel, uh, to the show, uh, to, to the uh, Dean Blackman Show Facebook page, and you could see an incredible um, guest that's on, Bill Schaefer. He, uh, he teached uh, political science for years at, uh, at American University in D.C., and uh, Bill and I had a chance to meet. I was just, uh, uh, Sharon and I were at the uh, uh, Stony Brook uh, train station and just like, you know, bumping into people here. I meet this wonderful man that was uh, uh, taking the train to uh, JFK Airport. He was eventually going to uh, get on a flight to go to Prague, uh, the Czech Republic. This trip to Prague that he was making was the hundredth country that he's been to and uh, a tremendous lecturer. And uh, he used to be a, a, a federal prosecutor for the Department of Justice. And he's got uh, just a, a tremendous amount of uh, fascinating stories uh, of, uh, 
uh, of of covering uh, and uh, taking uh, to uh, court many Asian and Italian Russian uh, Russian organized crime uh, people and taking them to court for years. Uh, just a tremendous uh, federal prosecutor. So he's got fascinating stories, as you can see. I'm excited about uh, Bill. He's got a lot to share. And a uh, 160-year-old house he lives in, in Oldfield, uh, New York here. It's, this, it's the second oldest home in Oldfield. And the last thing I'm gonna say, so I, keep, so I stop talking, is that uh, what, what makes it exp exciting, and I know you're gonna be anxious to have Bill in studio here, is that a former boss of his years ago, when he was a prosecutor, is a uh, special investigator right now with the Russian elections, uh, Bill Mueller, Robert Mueller. So I know you're anxious to, to meet Bill Schaefer. Enough of me. How about some catch up with you? Well, to sort of say something about that, so I would love to interview Robert Mueller. Oh, my God, you wouldn't be able to keep me away. Um, but, yeah, would be, I think... I think you, you can have two lots of stories. You've got this because I've been to Prague. I've been to nearly all the countries in Europe. So I've I've clocked up a few countries on the way. So you don't want to get too lost on the travel thing, but it is such a bug. Once it gets under your skin and you're in a position to do that, it's really hard to leave it alone. I did it a while back, but uh, all that kind of thing. So yeah, I would love to be there and speak to him and get the inside line. I have to be a bit careful because you, you know, I'm, I'm God by nature sort of really inquisitive and just don't take people's word at things. So I'm more the investigative journalist, which, you know, is the background I'm from. And so it needs to be a bit of a balance there. So I just need to get that balance just right. I'll move on to one of mine. Right. Here's another one. So we've done the France one. The next one is, have you ever heard of anything called Carbon 60? Carbon 60. Carbon 60. Rhea, I've never heard of Carbon 60. Well, it turns out that's okay because there's not that many people that have. It's, I've had it under the microscope for a bit to have a look at it. Uh, it came up a while ago. So what is Carbon 60? Carbon 60 is the new anti-aging thing, okay? So carbon 60 is doesn't naturally occur on Earth. It has to happen in an oxygen free environment. So it's what they do. They uh, arc. You get a carbon arc reactor where they, they arc two lots of carbon together. And out of that, you get carbon 30, 40, 60 and 75. They extract the 60. And in Paris, 2012, they did an experiment on two groups of rats, one without and one with carbon 60. And it's what they learned was in someone's DNA. You have a strand in there. I won't go into names that you're born with the strand, say, this long. And then over a lifespan, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter, right? They, they've noticed and noted in this Paris experiment that when you start taking carbon-60, that strand that gets shorter and shorter reduces by around four times. Wow. Right? So there's a company out the US and they're selling olive oil that is um got carbon 60 in it and all the new research is coming together for carbon 60 so whoever's watching the show you've joined this tiny group of people that have heard of carbon 60 what do you think dean ria are you unless i missed something here are you telling me that carbon 60 the delivery of carbon 60 is being brought through olive oil Correct. That's where the Paris test was done on the rats lived way longer with carbon 60 and the, the shortening of this strand was reduced by around four times than the, than the normal rats. Normal rats pop their clocks, carbon 60 rats. Pshong. Wow. And the delivery method is by, you know, with with olive oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Rhea, I love olive oil. I never use. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I love olive oil, so uh, I never use when when I go out to dinner. I never, uh, if I indulge in bread, which I love to do, which I shouldn't do. Bread. Um, what I usually do is I take the dough out of my bread, and I just eat the crust. I don't eat the dough to bread. I just eat That's the crust, funny. and I mm -hmm. say take away the butter, and always bring me some olive oil. So I'm going to get some good carbons in me through olive oil. 
Well, you've got to buy this stuff. No, 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 no. Well, 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 let's be clear. It's not in ordinary olive oil. You've got to buy olive oil that's had carbon-60 put in it. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell restaurants that I fre- frequent that they've got to get carbon-60 with carbon-60, olive oil with carbon-60 in it. Okay, I'll tell you what, I would love to be on the fly on the wall when you say that to a waiter or something. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do gonna it. They're going to look at you like they look at me like I'm an alien or something. I'm going to test it out tonight wherever I'm going. Yeah, you do that. You do that. And what that's like <laughs> when I speak to people and I'm, t- and I'm, you know, just everyday life, n- not my online life, everyday life. And you, I go to do something, I'll say, do you take cryptocurrency? And they just look at you like, what? I said, you ever heard of Bitcoin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the currency that the villains use, isn't it? And and that's all that people know. And then there's this whole other world. Oh, by the way, Bitcoin is at its all-time high today of five thousand seven hundred dollars. Wow. And uh, yeah, in two thousand and eleven hundred, it was a couple of bucks. I know you love that area, bit currency, and you love to invest in it. Uh, that's what yeah. makes us so different. Our worlds. Uh, that's something that uh, that I know very little about. Well, not many people do. I mean, obviously, I got I went in sort of neck deep into it, and I'm pretty heavily invested in it, which is going to lead me to another story, right? This it really is fresh off the off the press, and the headline is maybe a bit to the point, but it is what it is. Popping your clogs with digital assets and cryptocurrencies. I get a phone call on Monday, right, from this lady that I've only just met. And um, in our first meeting, it came up that we, you know, we were just chewing the fat and it came up. I said, yeah, I love my cryptos. And, you know, it's brought big smiley face to me. So I'm all for it and all that kind of stuff. She goes, you're not going to believe what happened. Um, My friend... Uh, my friend's husband was into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, 62 years old, walking down the road, has uh, a bleed and is dead within three hours. Wow, right? amazing. So that's the story. I'm not going to dwell there. But meanwhile, because they had no idea it was coming, he set up what's called Bitcoin mining rigs in his shed, producing money. So they're like little printing presses making money. And she can't get access to any of it. And if he's been doing it since 2011, bear in mind, if you bought a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin in 2011, your one dollar is now worth five thousand seven hundred dollars. Amazing. And she she can't get access to it. So I've got the phone call to go in to find out what this stuff is, what it's doing, and how she can get access to what could be millions. Wow. But she so pop in your clog with cryptocurrencies. So the lesson is if you are trading or you have digital assets, be it cryptocurrencies, anything on your computer, things like that, nobody's gonna die early, are they? But this guy did, and if it does happen, someone else needs access to your stuff. Otherwise, Pauline, who I'm going to be meeting at some point in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna hear her story of, she knows there could be millions there, and she can't get anywhere near it. Wow, what an amaz- wow. amazing story, Rhea. I know, it's just come out the blue because nobody knows about what's called GPU mining rigs. So I've got to go and check out these GPU mining rigs and find out exactly what they're doing. And then obviously she's going to ask me to hack into all this stuff to try and for her to get access to this money that she can't get near with a, near with a barge pole or something. Rhea, how would you learn about all this stuff? I, I'm always reading about different things, aren't I? So I don't know how you read... All the things that you fit in a day, I find it just, uh, I don't know how you do it. I, I, I don't know. I just do it. If I, I'm more curious than a cat. So um, anything that catches my curiosity, I usually just end up going down a rabbit hole and then popping. The political thing, I went down a rabbit hole and didn't come out for two years. Do you know what I mean? And now I kind of, th- that will lead me to another thing, but I want to do it on a close really um no i I do it now right i heard a thing do you want to do a story dean listen my story is uh that uh i don't know if you ever heard of the new york yankees 
Yes. <laughs> that, that's the bat one, right? Bat. You see, Rhea says bat. That's called baseball, Rhea. Okay, so here in North America, the big four sports, the leagues, are football, the NFL, and then you got hockey, the NHL. Uh, MLB is uh, Major League Baseball. Um, which one did I leave off? I said the baseball, uh, hockey, football, and basketball, the, N the NBA. Okay, so you've got those four major leagues. Well, even if you're, even if you're not a big baseball fan, even if you're not a big baseball fan, you're a big football, basketball fan, or hockey fan, okay? Everybody heard of the New York Yankees. And the New York Yankees have not won a World Series championship since uh, 2009. I think I'm correct. I think it's 26 <laughs> World Championships they, they've won. So this year, expectations were so low. Young team of kids, young team of kids, they thought, you know, everybody was talking maybe a year, two years from now, uh, they'd have their chance. But un not only did they have an incredible season, Rhea, performed way beyond expectations. Um, they had to, after the season was over, they had to go to a, a one game, a one game do or die playoff against another team. Okay. They won that game. And then they went into a five-game series, a divisional championship series, against probably definitely uh, the best team in the American League and might be the best team in baseball, the Cleveland Indians. And they went into a five-game series, okay? They lost the first two games in Cleveland. They lost the first two games, which means they came back to New York. It now turns into a best of three, okay? If they lose that first one in New York, it's over. They go home. The Yankees came back in dramatic fashion and won three straight games, and now they're going to a seven-game series in the American League Championship Series. They're one series away from going to the World Series. It's the most. New York uh, is pumped up. They're excited. The country, um, whatever the case, whether you love them or you hate them, the New York Yankees are a world brand, and uh, they're on the big stage again, and they're they're creating tremendous excitement. So, so listen, there's so much bad news every day out there, Rhea. It's good to it's good to have some great news. These young kids that play for the New York Yankees. Over to you, Rhea. I think it's great news, Dean. I mean, obviously, I don't know about such things, but um, you're right. I mean, there's so much grief out there, but. I mean, how can you hate a team? How does hate hate really? I get that you support a team, but hate something? I don't get that. And like you say, it the New York Yankees. That's that cap you wear, isn't it? No, this is uh, this is. I mean, yeah, this is my this is my other great sports team. Uh, my son is a uh, 2009 graduate of the University of Michigan. Right. So, uh, you know, and obviously there's been plenty of Dean on the streets. You know, I'm a Michigan go blue guy. Uh, unfortunately, you're bringing up a sore point last because uh, they had a dev devastating loss last Saturday against the oh. uh, against the team from East Lansing, who I won't mention. But uh, just they got to get back on track this coming Saturday. The sports thing. My my brother loves his sports thing. Yeah, I, it's it's a dude thing, right? So I think, well, no, maybe not. I don't know, but I don't, I don't, I just can't connect with it. But I love it that you love it. I love that people are really passionate about it, and it, and it really does matter. So I, w you and your team, Dean. I wish you the best of luck, and maybe you need to rock into the stadium to bring them some Dean on the street and some good luck. Hey, Ria, you made a statement. You said it's. You, you made a statement where you said it. Uh, you felt it's more of a dude thing. You come yeah. here. You come here to this country. You come to America. It's, right. it's it. We're talking about a culture. It might be more of a gal thing. I mean, women, big, huge sports fans. I mean, whether it be say big whether women. it be the whether it be the no not big women <laughs> whether it be the Yankees or uh, whether it be Michigan. I mean, right. uh, being a sports fan or a spectator of sports or weekend athlete uh it ain't a dude thing here in america okay okay i, I don't know i mean it's a, it's, i've been to america so you know hey listen even... listen everybody that's what makes this uh this young lady why it's so appealing our show that uh, our worlds and our cultures 
are so different and we're able to bring that through our show they are different they are you know they are different and obviously until you do stuff like this and you got to meet a weirdo i think you're nuts and then between it you manage to sort of go okay that's a cultural difference all right i've got to work with that and words that you use that you know is your everyday language and and humor is quite different as well english humor is sort of quite niche and american humor is well there's obviously all sorts of humor but there are much bigger cultural differences than i gave it credit for than certainly when we first met because i was doing those quizzes and i had to come to realize that people on long island and new york know about long island and new york they don't do greece they don't do chile they don't do northern do you know what i mean it's about that and, and i'm sort of adjusted to it now but um yeah that's it right um, are you ready for another one i'm all set right let's take a look at this i heard a thing only today again it's not a personal thing i heard this guy say to me this is political <clears throat> excuse me and a little bit profound in fact it could be very profound so i heard this guy today oh i respect enormously absolutely enormously one one of a handful of guys that i listen speak at lectures and stuff and he said politically voting voting politically has never throughout all of history freed the people right so just take that on board okay so you can argue that obviously but if that were the case, so politically voting for a party throughout history has never set the people free, right? Mm. Then I followed that in my mind with Einstein's um, theory of madness. So it's Einstein, it's not just a dude in the pub, it's Einstein. He said to repeatedly do the same thing and expect the end result to be different. You've heard me say that before, right? Wow. And you put the two together, why do we keep thinking that well, does that mean we're all mad for thinking that each time we go to vote it's going to make a difference um yeah i think we're mad thinking that that's I, gonna i think we are as well you know i think if we dug into the history we'll see that very little change actually occurs after voting we keep going to vote thinking it's going to so if you go to Einstein's, we repeatedly do the same thing and expect change, and it never does. So according to Einstein, we're all a bit nuts. Hey, listen, I don't, I don't say according to Einstein, okay? I say according to Rhea Bo. Oh. Okay, how many, times, how many times have we had discussions that you say an election's not going to make a difference? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we've had so many discussions about that over the past year. Yeah. So, do you have any, do you have anything else uh, catching up that you want to do? What else we got? Um, oh yeah. So this is me closing out. This is my last one. Okay. I wanted to bring up. So this is my last. This is, well, the other one's going to close out, but I'm going to go with this. Right. Two things that I want to point out. With you got the political thing, right? I really try to refrain from going down that rabbit hole. And I'm trying to step back to get a less of a, a macro view and more from sort of looking back at the earth from the moon. And I've sort of come up with this. I've been reading about two topics and one is called allotheology and one is called epistemology, right? Epistemology is the study of knowledge and allotheology is, called, is the study of truth, brackets, nature of truth okay so in this case we're looking at a section of epistemology called allotheology which is the study of truth okay so i've i've, I've i see a flaw so i'm reading about allotheology because you know you got people out there saying um the truth the truth the truth well after i've read through many scholars over centuries have studied the truth and i've arrived at this and so did they there are two truths right so that, that's like whoa there are two truths according to the brains in the world there is one truth that is the universal truth and the second truth is a personal truth how do we define the difference universal truth 
is direct contact and everybody can agree here's the universal truth that if you put an unprotected hand in the fire your hand will burn i think that and everybody would agree that's the universal truth hmm. personal truth is a personal take on any, anything but that so and i think we live in a world where people haven't been told or they're less aware through personal awareness that there are two truths not one universal and personal and we have a whole bunch of people politicians you know citizen political people preaching it like it's universal truth wrapping it up in universal truth but it isn't at all it's a personal truth and i think that's why one of the big mistakes are made by when we listen to people and they're preaching this and they're passionate about this truth and you have to go hold it a minute that's not a universal truth that's a personal truth there's two truths dean wow wow that's an amazing analogy you just did that was quite a way to uh, close out the show today that's me, Don Darlings. You know, love and peace always. If you love someone, tell them. Don't give in to the toxicity and watch out for two truths. There's two of them, it turns out. Leave it to Rhea Bo. What a great, uh, what a great final comments. And uh, someone special in my life that I love and adore. I'm going to visit her very soon. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and probably one of the greatest guests on this show is uh, my 90-year-old mom. Uh, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. always ask for you and, and she can't wait to uh, hey, Mrs. Blackman. see you again and see us. She's, she's anxious to be on the show and uh, she's, uh, she's anxious to do more with you. So thanks for a great Dean and Rhea catch up today. Uh, Can I just say something to your mum? You could say anything you want, Rhea. Go ahead. Hey, Mrs. Blackman, we're still on for a weekend bender, or you don't call it a weekend nut session in Las Vegas. Awesome. Me and you, lady. Sounds we're going great. hit hard tables and stuff. Rhea Bo with my mom in Las Vegas. That's going to make a great show. That'll make How a great would show. That be? Awesome show. So uh, I need you to make it here to Long Island one day, though, Rhea. Yeah, it's first class and it's it's expensive stuff, darling. We'll 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 cut the show off from here. But uh, <laughs> listen, thanks, <laughs> thanks for a great uh, thanks for a great <laughs> keep laughing. Thanks for a great catch up show today. Uh, more no. more more to come. As you can see, we have fun here, and uh, I want to thank everybody uh, from all of us uh, here at uh, at the Dean Blackman Show. Uh, you can look up uh, a lot of uh, the past shows on the show's YouTube channel, uh, on Facebook, and uh, always welcome your comments, your feedbacks. If you want to reach me, it's uh, dean at deanbleckman.com. And uh, just to wish everybody, Rhea, take care. Everybody over there in Europe from around the world, we'll, uh, we'll see you uh, real soon. Bye-bye now. You've been listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island, New York. From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.